Yes, receive yes, the food yes, that she is about yes, to bring yes, to us yes, and, and think of it as eating your appetizers, your yes. entree, and your dessert all at once. I'm hungry, so we I'm want hungry, you I'm to hungry. be hungry yes. for the word of God. And at this time, let's say Evangelist Freeman. Feed us God's word. Feed us God's word. Hallelujah. I heard she say, I'm thirsty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. to 
situation that they had. I want you to hold your finger there because we're going to come back and turn with me to Matthew 5. Matthew 5, and we're going to start at verse 11. Blessed are ye, when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice. Somebody say rejoice. Rejoice. And be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. This is Jesus speaking. And he said, first of all, if you are persecuted for my, my name's sake, you are blessed. It sure doesn't feel like you're blessed when you're going through. But the Lord and the word of the Lord says you are blessed. If men shall revile you or persecute you or lie on you, he said you are blessed. And then in 12, he tells us exactly what we should do. He said, rejoice. Somebody say, rejoice. We see that Paul and Silas decided that they were going to rejoice when they were in captivity. They understood what the word of the Lord said. This was not their first time going through persecution. And they understood that they ought to cry out and rejoice and bless the Lord. Great is your reward in heaven. Also pointed out you should be exceedingly glad. Well, how many people are glad when they're going through captivity or persecution? But the Lord is saying, make sure that you are exceedingly glad, which means beyond the gladness that you've had in the past, there should be an extra of, of rejoicing. And so Paul and Silas rejoiced. They called on Jesus. They prayed and they sung praises. And the only way that they could do that and be exceedingly glad is if they knew what the word of the Lord said. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I can only imagine yes. at this time that there was actually a service in this prison. Uh -huh. well. And the word of the Lord said that the prisoners heard them. They were now in the middle of a service. Well. Anytime you decide you're going to pray and sing praises, that's called a service. set up. I can imagine how the prayers sound during this time knowing that they knew what the word of the Lord said. I can imagine they said that no weapon formed against us shall prosper Lord and I know because no weapon formed against us shall prosper Lord that we are going to be successful even in this dark prison you're going to do something good God. For all
times of Satan. Oh, yes. It changes and it shifts things, which represents the earthquake. When the earthquake came and it shook up the ground and it made them loose from their chains, it was because of their praise oh, yes. and their prayer. What am I saying? That when you are in captivity, when you are going through your trial and going through your tribulation, what you ought to do is pray and sing praises. And because they did this, they were delivered and so was everyone else. So when I look at this, I look at when you are delivered, because you're doing what God has called you to do, others will be delivered. When you are preaching and teaching in Jesus' name, it may not always look good, but understand that wherever he takes you, well, even if he takes you to the darkest place, there's a purpose for you there too. Yeah, and in there, souls can be saved. The Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It didn't say it won't touch you. It didn't say things won't happen. Well, it didn't say that trials won't come. Uh -huh. It said it won't prosper. Yes. It won't do what it was set out to do. Yes. That even in the midst of Satan's plan, God can come in and shake things up yes. and change it around for you. When you decide you're going to stay flat-footed on the word of God. Yes. And so in this, understand things will happen. But even in your darkest place, Boy. if you are standing before the Lord, you will be successful. Yeah. You will come out as pure gold. Yeah. You will be victorious. Yeah. But you got to stand on the word of God and praise and sing praises. Yeah. Now you may think that's a hard thing to do when you're in a dark place. It's not a hard thing to do in your dark place if you have decided in your heart and in your mind that I'm going to go through no matter what. I'm not looking back, but I'm moving forward. And the only way for me to go forward is with Jesus. And the Bible says that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. All things work together. They come together. They may not look like a complete vision, but they come together. If you ever look at a puzzle, it looks all distorted and different pieces all over the floor or table, whichever place you decide to put a puzzle together. And you look at it and it looks like it's not together. Well, and sometimes your life can look like it's not together. Yeah. And you can't fully see the vision of what God has in store for you because it's not together yet. Yeah. But it said all things. It didn't say some. It said all things work together yes. for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Yes. Things will happen but it will come together. Yes. Eventually the vision will come together. Yes. Eventually your trial will be no more and it will come together. Yes. As you're praising and worshiping the Lord, it will come together. Yes. But you have to know, you have to stand on the word of God. Yes. And things that happen in your life at times uh -huh. is the perfect set up. Yes. And you may ask, what do you mean by that's the perfect setup? This sounds like a horrible experience that Paul and Silas are going through, but it's a perfect setup. Oh, yeah. It's perfectly designed by the Lord so that souls could be saved yes. in a dark place. Yes. But it's the perfect setup. Somebody say perfect setup. Perfect setup. Yeah. was the perfect setup. So in verse 27, it said the keeper of the prisoner awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But then if we jump to verse 30, it says, and he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do yes. to be saved? Yes. Uh -huh. God can change the heart and the mind of someone suddenly. Yes. He can change the heart and the mind of someone quickly. Yes. It does not always take a whole lot where he can shift from 27 to 30, which is only three verses. We see a shift in the change of the heart's mind. Now he's looking on at what just happened. Boy. He heard Paul the Silas singing and praying unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And then he sees that there's an earthquake and now all the prisoners are loose. Yeah. So he's seen a miracle. Yeah. He also seen God. 
the people of God in the prison. But I want you to look at this. That's not what made him say, what must I do to be saved? After that happened, he was ready to kill himself. He was ready to take his own life. But somebody say the perfect setup. The perfect setup. Paul seen what was about to happen and he cried out loud and said, no, stop. We are all here. So what changed the heart and the mind of the guard? It was the fact that the guard was a part of Satan's plan. He was playing a major part because if they even came up with an idea of how to break out, he was there to make sure they did not. Uh -huh. He played such a role that he was the one who would be there all day and all night while everyone else went home. Oh, yes. But even after that, Paul said, don't kill yourself. Uh -huh. We are all here. Oh, yes. So what changed the heart and the mind of the guard? It was the fact that after I've done all this to you, you tell
hour, somebody say same hour, same hour. of the night and washed their stripes oh, yes. and was baptized. Mm -hmm. He and all his straight way. Oh, yes. And when he had brought them into his house, he sat meat before them uh -huh. and rejoiced. Believing in God with all his house. Oh, yes. So Paul and Silas being locked up with the domino effect of the prisoners being welcomed into a service of praise and prayer. Into deliverance after the service of praise and prayer. Into going into a home and delivering the guard and his family. Oh, yes. The perfect setup. At the moment, you may not feel like your situation is the best situation that you're in, but understand that there's a domino effect, and God is setting you up for something greater, and many times you don't even get to see all the souls you have touched as you are going through, because some of them will just look on, but they won't say anything to you. Yeah. Some of them will just look on, and they'll wonder about who is the God they serve. go through the perfect setup. He told them to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that you may be saved. And not only was he saved, but his whole house was saved. And so what are you saying? I'm saying that if you are somebody who's looking for a change in your home or in your job or in your life, you get yourself together and the people around you will get themselves together. Because it's a domino effect. It will, it will overflow into the people who are in your circle. Set up. But I want to also talk to you about not just the guard getting saved and his house getting saved, but you getting saved. Turn with me to 1 John 1 and 9. Yes, Lord. God can move suddenly, right? I said it can move in your heart and your mind suddenly, right? Amen. So if you are here and you are not saved or you are going through your own trial and you're looking for a sudden change or sudden deliverance, God can still move suddenly, right? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Oh, yes. The Lord said if we confess our sins, if we say, Lord, I am a sinner, I, I'm not living holy, Lord, and you, you confess the things that you have done, and don't just say, Lord, forgive me of my sins, but go down the things that you know you can name that you remember, because there's some sins you probably don't even remember, but the ones that you can, confess them. Oh, yes. So if you confess your sins, uh -huh. he is faithful yeah. and just oh, yes. to forgive you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That means that he is going to hold on to his promise that he says in his word. Yeah. Oh, yes. That if you do your part, He's going to faithfully do his part, yeah. which is forgive you of your sins. Yeah. But you have to first take that first step, confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us oh. our sins yeah. oh, yes. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh -huh. God's desire is that we are all living pure, that we are all living clean, that we are all living in a way where he is pleased and you can stand before him and he's pleased with everything that you say and you do and you think but first we have to confess yeah. oh. our sins the Bible so says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life uh -huh. that means it's for everyone yeah. that means that it's not about race that means that it's not about culture. 
That means it's not even about age. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, whoever wants to get saved, if you believe in him, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. So my message is a twofold. The perfect setup in your life when things don't look good, things don't look great, but God has placed you there for a purpose, and it's going to be a huge domino effect of souls being saved because you are there, but also understanding that God desires that you and I get saved and everyone gets saved so badly that he'll put his own, his own that he has pushed out two by two to get locked up to do it. I love you so much that I have someone get locked up to reach you. I love you so much that I have someone in captivity to reach you. I found a way for someone or Satan to come up with a plan and I took my hands away for that moment and said, yes, you can do that to them so that they can come in and reach you. That's how much he loves us. That's how much he wants us to be saved. Yeah. Those who want to get saved, but this is also for those who are, you may be in a situation right now, and you're looking at your life and you're saying, this can't be it. It's too dark. Well. If this can't be it. I don't belong here. All I was doing what God called me to do, and here I am, and I need more strength, and I need more support to get to where I want to go. If the prayer lines for that as well, come up and get prayer for that. And then if you just want prayer, because it's going to be a corporate prayer, come on up. Come on up. Hallelujah. Present God, and you are sheltering God. 